So good afternoon everyone. As uh, Mr. Abhijit said about uh, the program objectives everyone, I would like to start with one quote I read somewhere that illiterates of the 20, 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. So this whole perspective is based on learning, unlearning, relearning, upskilling of the target audience here. Before that, I am sure or I presume that uh, many of you might not be knowing about IAEP, Indian Institute of Public Administration, except uh, Mr. Amit Bhagwaj is uh, here from Niti Aayog because we are a big partner of Niti Aayog in capacity building field. Uh, in fact, right now also, there is a big program at IABA going on of ABPF, Aspirational Block Fellows Program. Uh, it is also a very ambitious program and close to the heart of Honorable Prime Minister, the Aspirational Block Fellows Program. Niti Aayog has in fact identified 500 aspirational blocks in whole of India and they have appointed block fellows there. The target is like aspirational is a say fancy word, we all know what does it actually mean that those blocks are lacking development, are backward on all parameters of development. Niti Aayog has identified 40 indicators in fact on those the aspirational blocks have been identified there and to enhance their level of development, to make their level of development up to the state levels or national levels, Niti Aayog is working very hard in that and they are funding this whole program. They have appointed 500 block fellows, in fact 325 to be precise right now, 175 more to be uh, appointed and IAPA is doing the capacity building for all these uh, aspirational block fellows at IAPA right now. In fact, we have uh, uh, trained more than 300, one batch is pending and some other who will be appointed in future will come to IAPA for that. Uh, they are planning big in this and this ASHA program may also be a logical corollary to that. Some friends might be from DRDO as uh, Mr. Avijit was telling and uh, they might be knowing IAPA because uh, we have uh, done a very big consultancy program for them uh, for the restructuring of whole DRDO ecosystem whole DRDO structure. We have just submitted the report. So Indian Institute of Public Administration is a training and research institution of Department of Personal Training, DOPT Government of India. Uh, we have the privilege of the Honorable Vice President of India as President of IAPA and Honorable Minister of a State in charge of DOPT, presently Dr. Jitan C. Mueller as Chairman of our Governing Board. And we, as Madam uh, uh, Dr. Bhushan was saying about civil-military correlation, we have in our training officers, senior defense forces officers also, like brigadiers, commodores, air and navy both, or senior officers from paramilitary forces, and senior civilian officers like IAS, IPS, other central services officers. And in fact, we have one big flagship program of DOPT, that is Advanced Professional Program in Public Administration, APA. That is a 10 month long program where DOPT nominates in equal proportion the senior defense forces officers as well as senior civil civilian officers and they go undergo this course at IAPA and so it is a perfect mix or perfect example of civil military correlation. In fact in the pandemic time many of uh, uh, say the army officers, defense forces officers shared the feedback with us that this course helped them a lot in forging civil military correlation. Like uh, one participant we developed a close friendship and uh, uh, he is uh, right now Lieutenant General. He was uh, Major General at that time of Bareilly Mountain Division. And he shared that uh, we had daily meetings in the period of pandemics with commissioners, DMs. And the APA course helped us a lot in forcing this close relationship with civilian counterparts. Otherwise, we could not have done that. And what Abhijit said about lateral entry program, Mr. Ambar, Mr. Padrinath, everyone is our training. We are proud of that, that we have been doing the capacity building for lateral entry officers. In fact, three batches are already there. We have trained all the three batches. The fourth batch of 26 officers is going to arrive on 13th of this month. And uh, the next fourth uh, program is going to start on 13th at IAPA only from 13th to 27th. 
may. So uh, we are doing our bit in the field of capacity building. And uh, since Abhijit is a close friend and I am a layman, I am neither a medical professional nor a scientist, though I am an engineer by education from Hassan Dhanbad, but I do not claim to be scientist or medical professional. Uh, so uh, it was something foreign to me uh, that he told that, no, you have to speak on the ASHA health sector perspective. So uh, I could not ignore his order and uh, I, ha I had to come here uh, to speak something about the capacity building, about ASHA workers. So ASHA, like accredited social health activists. The name ASHA is synonymous of hope. ASHA means hope. So as Madam was also saying about frontline workers. So ASHA is the first port of call in time of crisis in the rural areas. Like the perspective of government is also changing. We have evaluated one very good scheme of uh, government of India. I will be knowing about that. That is BADP, Border Area Development Program. Now it has transformed to BVP, Vibrant Villages Program. And that is a saturation approach of government. Earlier, the resources were lacking. Like say, in a block, if 100 hand pumps were required, only 10 were supplied. And what happened with the, those 10? We all know, political masters were there, officers were there, everyone had their share. So the targeted common audience could not get all those benefits. Now the approach has, has changed. This approach of, say, poverty has given way to saturation approach. Like if 100 is needed, then give 1000. So that there should not be any corruption. Everyone should get the resources they want, they need. And in this slide only, BBP was also formulated or rather reformulated from BADP, where saturation approach was there. Earlier, we used to call the border villages as last villages on the border of India. But now they have been called as first villages. The India starts from there, first village in the border, from the border. And whole saturation approach like schools, hand pumps, electricity, water, Jandivan mission, everything that they should get first because they are our first line of defense. As Asha is our first line of defense in the field of rural healthcare or grassroots healthcare. I was a bit surprised when I happened to see what a Vijit sent me the brochure that they are doing the pilot in nine states in 72 districts. And uh, the pilot was in MP as well as in Odisha, but in between, not in Chhattisgarh. Because Chhattisgarh is sandwiched between Madhya Pradesh and Odisha. And why when I dug up some information, uh, then I found out that it is the Chhattisgarh where the origin of this program lies. Chhattisgarh has really advanced in this rural healthcare field. Because when it was partitioned and carved out of uh, Madhya Pradesh in 2000, the public health was one area where Chhattisgarh was very, very down in the ladder. In fact, infant mortality rate in Chhattisgarh in 2002 was 95 per thousand, where the central and national average was 74 in rural areas. There were rampant uh, diseases like say malaria, sickle cell, or uh, other contagious diseases, NCDs. So what the government did, there is a saying in Chhattisgarh, like Sukhme Sabaya, Dukhme Mitanin. Mitanin is a word that is relevant to Chhattisgarh, that means friend, female friend. There is a culture in Chhattisgarh, like when the girls are born, then one girl from one family and one girl from another family are bonded. They are, say, bonded for life. They help each other in all diversity or all happiness. So the term Mitanin was there. They are called Mitanin. So this line, Sukhme Savaya Dukhme Mitane. Dukhme, agar koi diversity ho, to wherever she is 500 kilometers away, 1000 kilometers away, but she would come and help her Mitane. So on line of that Mitane, in 2002, the Chhattisgarh government started Swasthya Mitane program. Like it was a precursor of Asha. There in blocks, in rural areas, they appointed Swasthya Mitane. And they were given this task, taking care of rural healthcare facilities so that these problems can be ward off. And Chhattisgarh has really made a good progress in that. 
now their uh, infant mortality rate uh, in rural areas is only 40 or uh, below 40 i think 38.5 something so with this astounding success of this swasthya vitanin program government of india copied this in 2005 and started national rural health mission in rhm and where this concept of asha originated in 2005 and ashas were given many responsibilities as abhijit was saying that but he rightly pointed out that they are not doctors they are at best a supporter in healthcare facilities their qualification or whatever it is the line there is group of 25 to 45 years there should be minimum 10th pass so we cannot expect them to be doctors they are not medical professionals but at best assistants to medical facilities healthcare sub facilities in pursuit of say one health for india and providing not only universal healthcare but quality healthcare also they were given so many responsibilities like antenatal care maternity care taking care of infants children then uh, taking care of pregnant ladies uh, taking care of immunization vaccination and the most important thing was monitoring and reporting and giving feedback evaluation so for this a comprehensive capacity building program was also devised in rhm in 2005 that there would be a nodal officer at district level at district level there would be a district health society dhs at block level there would be a block nodal person block nodal officer at district level there would be a district nodal officer then anganwadi was was there at that time and anganwadi workers ans like auxiliary nursing midwives would train them asha workers and they were mandated to get training say seven days at first instance they get a year at least four times training of five days or four days each they would be supplied with over the counter drugs or like we say ors or uh, iron 40 acid things like that so that in time of crisis in time of any healthcare need they can supply those they were also mandated to report any birth or death in the village so that birth and death registers could be maintained now this physical trainings were planned like they would go to anganwadi and anganwadi workers will train them once a week then they may be called at uh, district headquarter level and they would get training from their uh, community health centers and primary health care centers that doctors would uh, take their assistance they were mandated with the task of uh, taking pregnant ladies to CSCs or PSCs. So all these things cannot be done obviously without capacity building or training because the workers, ASHA workers are not very highly qualified. You must understand that. So what Abhijit was saying about the DISHA program that is Digital Innovations and Interventions for Sustainable Health Action. Well, this is a very ambitious program. In fact, uh, what you were talking about Karmayogi Bharat and the IGOT, Integrated Government Online Training, that is designed or its objective is to train the officers from chairman to line man. Like, uh, can anyone guess about the size of bureaucracy in India from a center to a state? How vast we are or what is our volume? We have 26 million officers, like 2.6 crores from center to a state and uh, local bodies, total 2.6 crores. Uh, just uh, some days back, I was uh, just going through a report from Estonia, the survey in civil services, they have only 24,000. And we, we have 26, uh, 2.6 crores. And the most ironical part is that only 1.25 lakhs Senior officers, like top level officers, IGS, IPS, other central services officers, corner all the trainings and the lower level officers as well as the state level officers do not get any relevant training at all. 
like say three, four days or a foundation of two, three months in their whole lifetime. So for this, to eradicate this anomaly, this national capacity building, civil services capacity building program was devised. And now the institutions are making courses, putting on IGOT platform so that everyone can get the trainings, relevant trainings. And there has been good examples like training of Kramin Dark Sevaks. Department of Post has taken this on war footing and they have trained more than say 2 lakhs, 3 lakhs post postmen or postal persons, Brahmin Dark Sevaks with this IGOT online training. As also in railways, the railway board has also taken this on war footing and they have trained all the say TTs or institution masters, uh, ASMs with this IGOT training. And uh, I think the number is more than 5 lakhs in this or not less than uh, 4 lakhs, I suppose, because uh, the TTs and lower level officers make a big chunk of uh, Indian railway personnel. So why can't we do this with ASHA also? Obviously, as Avijit pointed out, that they are not uh, on payroll of government. They are not, uh, say, paid workers. Uh, in fact, uh, they do not get a stipend also, as you said. They only get incentives. They are incentivized. And uh, I was just going through about the incentives and I saw that the last last revision came in 2018. And it is such a, such a minute amount, like if registering a, say, a pregnant lady, in the village and uh, uh, the pregnant lady uh, get 2000 and asha worker will get uh, say 300 or 400 like this so very small sum in all uh, uh, in a month they cannot get more than 3000 or 4000 rupees so this is very minuscule sum uh, we have to request uh, say uh, the department of health and family welfare uh, for uh, not only upskilling them but uh, upping this incentive programs also but otherwise, who will get the motivation to do all these things? Because their job is very tough in the rural surrounding, village surrounding. Every ASHA worker is expected to say work for like three, four hours a day. For three, four, uh, three, four hours a day also, the 3,000 or 4,000 per month is very, very meager amount. So uh, we have to think about that also. And uh, like they have getting this physical training but physical training is not sufficient for 9 lakh ASHA workers all over the country. We have to devise, like Avijay said, that a training platform, online training platform, or some online training material, as uh, he was uh, pointing to Mr. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Vivek. It's a WhatsApp chatbot on which they... WhatsApp chatbot, exactly. In fact, uh, I have seen this uh, uh, methodology of uh, capacity building in NRLM. National Rural uh, Livelihood Mission Program. They also do capacity building program, both physical as well as online. And in online training, what they do, they make material, videos, everything, and they make a, say, WhatsApp group of that targeted audience, like say 30, 40. Uh, because in the, uh, NRLM is also a very big program where uh, SHG self-help groups are involved, the uh, capacity building of uh, the rural women uh, is involved in that. And uh, uh, apart from physical training, they do this type of online training. 30, 40, in 30, 40 groups, they make a group on WhatsApp. They supply the videos uh, on WhatsApp. They ask questions. They give assignment on WhatsApp itself, where, uh, uh, which every woman has to do that. Because uh, what is uh, uh, the biggest drawback of online training? That our span of attention is very low. In fact, there has been a research on Harvard that our span of attention has so diminished that we can cannot concentrate on say a, on a page or a book for more than say 30-40 uh, seconds. So uh, that that's why in fact capacity building commission we, uh, uh, which is uh, which has been formed uh, in pursuit of this uh, national civil services capacity building program it has advised every CTI that is into training institutes uh, and IEBA like uh, these institutes that please make shorter videos, not long videos. Because earlier, what happened that uh, when IGOT was formed, and our courses are also there, like one of our courses of IAPA, that is our stress management, is the biggest hit on IGOT. 
more, more than I think uh, fifty thousand persons uh, or officers have so far gone uh, that stress management video or training program. But they are now advising everyone that make shorter videos, like say five minutes, seven minutes, not more than that, because our span of attention is not much. And if uh, one uh, one gets a video of say twenty minutes or thirty minutes. Uh, he or she will hardly look up the, all the videos. Just they will uh, forward that, or they will just skip that, uh, something like that. So the real purpose of online training is defeated. There is uh, another problem uh, in online training, like the peer level, which uh, the officers uh, or trainees gets in physical training. Like peer learning is a biggest component of uh, a capacity building program that uh, we learn from the best practices of others. During say lunch discussion or tea discussion, or in classroom question and answer also, that is lacking in online training. So we have to think about uh, that also when we devise the material uh, for online training for them, like continuously keeping track of them, continuously asking questions in the group, uh, continuously trying to uh, get uh, the ASHA workers engaged so that uh, they cannot be distracted uh, from the training program. Otherwise, the very purpose of the training will be defeated. Uh, so uh, these are some of the things and for this uh, not only asha but like uh, there is a big institution of uh, cmo at district level chief medical officer under which all these programs run cmo is there then at block level also there uh, there are community health center as i said that there are doctors so we have to uh, get an integrated approach because those are the persons uh, which are in constant touch with the ASHA workers. So uh, they work as mentor to ASHA workers also. They advise them also. So we have to take a holistic view about this by developing uh, capacity building training materials for them also or involving them as say district headquarter level. Uh, like uh, when uh, you are getting going through a you know, say 72 district pilot program, it is uh, one of the biggest pilot projects uh, around the globe. Uh, so we have to take care of all these things also because TNA is very necessary. Uh, in this pilot project, one of the components should be TNA, training need analysis. That what is lacking, what should be done in the online training and the impact assessment of earlier trainings also. Like what they have undergone in the physical training program. Their feedback is very necessary. The ASHA workers also. Uh, and uh, it is very tough to get the feedback from all of them, but a randomized sample can be there, like 10%. Uh, and uh, the feedback of uh, doctors there, CMOs there, and uh, the members of uh, District Health Society, that is that is very important. Their feedback then how to structure this program, how to make this program more effective, this digital learning about, from the ASHA workers. So all these things, we have to take care of that. And uh, I think and I hope that the Visha program is going to be uh, going to suffice all these things. Uh, for the ASHA workers, I remember one line because uh, they are someone in the rural areas people bang upon. And they encounter so many hurdles, so many problems, but they still they are working with those bigger salary itself, but with higher motivation. So I, I, I was just going through one share, if I are allowed to say that, about them, that Siriya Unhe Mubarak Ho, Siriya Unhe Mubarak Ho, Jine Chhat Tak Jana Hai. Siriya Unhe Mubarak Ho, Jine Chhat Tak Jana Hai. Mujhe To Apni Manjil Khud Banani Hai, Raste Khud Banani Hai. So, with this, I would like to thank Abhijit and each and everyone. I am I am really overwhelmed to be here, and I am really feeling brought to be in such a uh, such an esteemed gathering of qualified persons. But uh, thanks for inviting me, and thank you so much. Thank you very much.